In this presentation, you will take a look at multiple choice questions related to receivables. First question. The maturity date of a note receivable is the day of the sale, B, the day the note was signed, C, the day the note is due to be repaid, D, the date of the first payment, E, is the last day of the year. We'll go through the process of elimination now. The maturity date of a note receivable is A, the day of the sale. So the day of the sale uh, is, is, is the beginning of the note and maturity you would think would be uh, when it matures kind of like the end of it. So it's probably not A. We're going to say B, the day the note was signed. And again, that probably happens at the beginning of the note. And we may also think that A and B could possibly cancel each other out, them uh, possibly happening on a similar time period, the beginning of the note, the same day possibly. So it's, it's probably not B. I'm going to cross that out. C, the day the note is due to be repaid. That's the end of the note. And I would think that that would be more reasonable of a term for a maturity of a note. Uh, D says, I'll leave that for now. D says the date of the first payment. And uh, you, can, you might think that the date of the first payment is, is a kind of maturity in, in a sense, but it hasn't fully matured by that date because it's still going, you know, it's not, yeah. And then E says, is the last day of the year. And that's kind of an arbitrary number. It doesn't necessarily have to be the, the last day of the year. So that's not it. So I'll leave uh, C and D. And it says, once again, the maturity date of a note receivable is either C, the, the day the... Uh, <laughs> the day the note is due to be repaid, or D, the date of the first payment. And again, you might think that the payment would be when it becomes mature and, and yet not yet dead, right? It's still going. But actually maturity in this case almost kind of means when it, when it dies, right? When the thing is done, and that's gonna be C, the day the note is due to be repaid. It's been it's matured at the, at the day of the due date, basically the end of it, and it's gonna be you know done after that maturity date. So the answer is going to be C. We're going to say that the answer is the maturity date of a note receivable is C, the day the note is due to be repaid. <laughs> Next question. All the following statements regarding valuation of receivables are true, except A, the allowance method for uncollectibles is preferred unless uncollectibles are immaterial. B, uh, receivables should be reported net of estimated uncollectibles. C, expenses for estimated uncollectibles should be recorded in the same period as related revenue. Uh, D, both percentage of sales, percentage of uh, receivables can be used to estimate allowance for doubtful accounts. And E, bad debt expense is best recorded when it is determined to be uncollectible. Okay, let's go through these again. <laughs> All the following statements regarding valuation of receivables are true except. So remember, receivables, we're, we're valuing them, we're valuing them. We're probably going to be doing so looking at the two types of methods to writing off the receivables or valuing the receivables, that being the direct write-off method and the allowance method. Now, remember that when we, whenever we work these problems, we're, we're usually thinking the allowance method is the preferred method to use. So that's probably the one that we're going to be leaning towards as the best method if any of these statements indicate which method is best. So first we said the allowance method is um, allowance method for uncollectibles is preferred unless the uncollectibles are immaterial. And that seems reasonable. The allowance method is the preferred method unless something funny <laughs> happens like they're immaterial in nature. So that seems true and therefore not the correct answer. B, receivables should be reported net of estimated uncollectibles. And that's under the allowance method versus the direct write-off method. This is the allowance method. So that, that would seem to be uh, stating that we need to use the allowance method, which seems correct for you. That's usually the preferred method. And then C says expenses for estimated uncollectibles should be recorded in the same period as related revenue. And again, yeah, that's, that's going to be the term, that's the other side of the receivable. We may not think about that as much, but that's really what uh, the allowance method is doing. It's trying to match up the matching principle of revenue and the related expenses earned during the same time period. So that's true, and therefore not the correct answer. D, 
both percentage of sales, percentage of receivables can be used to estimate allowance for doubtful accounts. So again, this is telling us that we are using the allowance method, not the direct write-off method. And there's two ways that we can estimate what that allowance for doubtful accounts can be, either the percentage of sales method or percentage of receivables. And those are two valid methods we can use. So that one's not correct. Yeah, well, that's correct, therefore not the right answer. And then E says uh, bad debt expense is best recorded when it is determined to be uncollectible. Now that, de that describes the direct write-off method, which is clearly not the method we're looking for here because we're, we, whenever we look at these, we always are going to say, well, the, the allowance method is the one that they want, right? The one that's supposed to have the best match in principle and align with our uh, accounting concepts best. So E looks like to be incorrect and therefore is the correct answer for this question. One more time. All the following statements regarding valuation of receivables are true except E, bad debt expense is best recorded when it is determined to be uncollectible. So E therefore is not true and therefore correct.